Leading Stoker John Sheehan, Royal Navy World War I. John Sheehan was born in the village of Glanmire, Cork, in 1886 and from the age of 17 he served in the Royal Navy between 1903 to 1919 when at the age of 32 he was invalided from the Royal Navy with the rank of leading stoker. During World War I he served on HMS Lion and was involved in the following battles, Heligoland Blight in 1914, Dogger Bank in 1915 and Jutland in 1916. Lyon served as the flagship of the Grand Fleet battlecruisers throughout World War I. The Battle of Heligoland Blight in 1914 was Lyon's first action as flagship of the battlecruiser force on 28 August 1914 under the command of Admiral Beatty. Beatty's ships had originally been intended as distant support of the British cruisers and destroyers closer to the German coast in case the large ships of the High Seas Fleet sortied in response to the British attacks. The brand new light cruiser Arethusa had been crippled earlier in the battle and was under fire from the German light cruisers Strasbourg and Köln when Beatty's battlecruisers loomed out of the mist. German ship Strasbourg was able to duck into the mists and evade fire, but German ship Köln remained visible and was quickly crippled by fire from the squadron. German light cruiser Ariadne was directly to Lyon's front. Lyon turned in pursuit and reduced her to a flaming hulk in only three salvos at close range. Lyon later encountered the crippled German ship Korn shortly after turning north and she was sunk by two salvos from her. The Battle of Doggerbank which occurred in 1915 was one of the most legendary naval battles that occurred during the Great War. The battle occurred in the North Sea by Doggerbank and involved the German High Seas Fleet and the British Grand Fleet. Lyon was hit 15 times by heavy shells. This was a crucial hit because without the condenser being operational, water could not be fed to the boilers and eventually the ship would have to stop. Lyon was by now stopped, without electric power and had all but two signal halyards shot away. A turret was smashed and one gun out of action. Shelling caused flooding and she started to list to port, hit hard when one shell struck the armor below the waterline, drove in several plates and flooded foremost port bunker, and a second pierced armor on waterline, burst in torpedo body room and flooded all adjacent compartments, then three German ships again concentrated on Lion, hit by numerous shells between armor pierced and more flooding, shell burst in a turret lobby and started a fire, shell drove in armor on the waterline. Abreast one of the boiler rooms, seriously damaged, port engine had to be stopped, light and power failed, list to port increased to 10 degrees, and Lion dropped astern. She continued for home and HMS Indomitable took her in tow and she reached the Firth of Forth. 17 ratings wounded, including 5 very slightly. She fired a total of 243 heavy shells, hit Blutcher once, Durflinger once, Seedlitz twice, in turn hit by 16 11-inch and 12-inch shells, also one 8.2-inch shell. She made it back to port but was out of action for several months. After being temporarily repaired at Rosaith she returned to service as flagship of a new battle cruiser force. Since the British lost no ships and suffered few casualties, while the Germans lost a ship and most of its crew, the action was considered a British victory. The Battle of Jutland in 1916 was the largest naval battle of the First World War. The German High Seas Fleet hoped to weaken the Royal Navy by launching an ambush on the British Grand Fleet in the North Sea but the British were warned by their codebreakers and put to sea early. Jutland was a confused and bloody action involving 250 ships and around 100,000 men. Initial encounters resulted in the loss of several ships on both sides. During the Battle of Jutland HMS Lyon suffered a serious propellant fire that could have destroyed the ship if it had not been for the bravery of Royal Marine Major Francis Harvey, the turret commander, who posthumously received the Victoria Cross for having ordered the magazine flooded thus preventing the loss of the ship and as a result he was awarded a Victoria Cross for his actions. The fire destroyed one gun turret which had to be removed for rebuilding while she was under repair for several months. The Germans sank HMS Indefatigable and HMS Queen Mary, both of which blew up when German shells hit their ammunition magazines. 
the British lost 14 ships and over 6,000 men, but were ready for action again the next day. The Germans, who had lost 11 ships and over 2,500 men never again seriously challenged British control of the North Sea. The Battle of Jutland confirmed British naval dominance and secured its control of shipping lanes, allowing Britain to continue effective implementation of the maritime blockade that would contribute to Germany's eventual defeat in 1918. The following photographs are of ships served on by leading stoker John Sheehan between 1903 and 1919.